Now let me show you some different ways of getting the same things done. First, there are some implicit objects that you can use inside the Java code of a Java server page. This is a JSP that does about the same thing as the previous one did, but it does it in a different way. The embedded Java code uses the print line method of an object named out to write HTML to the final text. This out object is a member of the JSP writer class and has several different methods that you can use to output text directly to the page. Here it just outputs lines of display along with a counter. You can find the documentation on this implicit object and on all the other implicit objects in the documentation that you downloaded with J2EE when you installed it. You may need to search around in your installation directories a bit, but in the docs directory you will find a file named index.html, and that file can be used to lead you right here. All the rest of the software for J2EE is documented just this way and for the rest of the course I'll be assuming that you have access to it. The truth is if you want to be able to do anything other than the examples shown in this course you're going to need to be able to look around in here and find out just what you need. Now let me show you a different way of creating a war file and deploying it to the server. Here in the same directory as the JSP source file, I have created a directory named webinf. Inside this directory is an XML file that describes the contents of the war file. It's named web.xml and here's what it looks like. At the top of this is a standard header and it should be entered just as it's shown. There may be later versions of this so there could possibly be some variation from time to time but it has to be one that is known to the system. This lengthy name specifies the dictionary used to define those tags that are used in the XML code. Now this one is a very simple file in the web app body of the documentation there is only one listing the name of the JSP file now a war file has the same format as a jar file so you can use the jar utility to create one this command creates a war file holding the JSP and the descriptive XML file This command names the war file second.war and fills it with the directory and the JSP file. Now it's ready to be deployed to the server. If you're using a server other than the one that comes with J2EE, you'll need to look in its documentation to see how to actually deploy the war file to it. At the time this was recorded, the Tomcat server required that you stop the server, delete the deployed files, and copy in the new ones. Also, at the time this was recorded, a project was underway to simplify the deployment to Tomcat, so you might want to check and see whether that's already been done. To deploy your war file to the server downloaded with J2EE, you can log in as administrator and do it that way. Now, here's how you log in. The login name and password are the ones you assign to it when you install the server. You're presented with this list of actions you can take. The third item on the list here is to deploy the war file. We want to upload the file to the server you can just enter the full path name of the file here or you can use the browse button to find it
Using the next button takes us to a page that lists the names of things. You can specify here that the JSPs be pre-compiled and you can have everything verified as being correct before it's being deployed. The verification is not a bad idea, so we select that and then select OK to proceed. It has been deployed. You're shown a list of all the deployed items. In this case, there's only one. You can undeploy them or enable or disable any one of them. The only thing left to do is display the page.